Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture of internet programming. Today we are going to uh, discuss uh, that how can work we, work we work with the form data uh, that is submitted by the user on a web form. So, so far what we have uh, discussed, we have uh, uh, already discussed quite a few applications uh, related to PHP programming. We have seen how can we send the data through form how can we process the data using PHP language and how can we send back the data using HTTP response how can we interact with the database how can we get the data from a database or update the data in the database using PHP language now in all that uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, simple programming techniques uh, they were actually directly used and it was assumed that you already have the basic knowledge about all those since you have worked with programming languages before uh, in the previous semester so some of the statements that we were using in those uh, applications so probably it would be easy for you to understand you know, because you do have the basic knowledge about those uh, but some of the things that we actually used there were uh, relatively new so we'll go through those in details now and also we'll go through uh, some of the uh, some of the programming uh, language uh, statements that you may have studied in other languages but we'll just go through those again so just to refresh the concepts as well uh, from now on so starting with the the forms first so since we need a form whenever we are getting input from the user so uh, we'll try to see that how can we create uh, different kind of forms how can we get various kind of inputs from the user how can we process those inputs uh, and what are the uh, uh, practical problems that we might face while creating or getting the data using different kind of form techniques so these are the, uh, the objectives of this particular chapter are we'll see how can we use the text boxes where we can get the you know text inputs from the user the possible boxes where the uh, input of the user is actually not shown radio buttons check boxes drop down list list boxes and the text areas to get input from the user we'll also see how can we use the hidden fields to pass the data when uh, the form is submitted so the user may not actually pass the data but the data might still be there and it would be passed whenever the user might submit the data and uh, we'll also see the html special char function nl2br function uh, to, to display the user entries the way we want it to be displayed and we'll also see the echo statement and the print statement that how these two could be used to, to print something on the uh, on the web page so the knowledge objectives of this chapter are so describe the way PHP application gets data from text boxes uh, passwords, hidden views, radio buttons, check boxes, drop down list all of that and uh, describe the special functions and echo and print statement so this is a uh, example to get text input from the user so to get input from the user we have to use this tag input tag now within this uh, input tag uh, we may specify what we may specify three things here the type that what kind of input it is is it a text input or some other kind of input we'll specify the uh, name the name is actually the variable which will get the input which is specified by the user and value is uh, actually an optional thing that uh, you may specify if you want a certain value to be uh, a certain value uh, to be there in the box already before the user gives any input so if you don't want anything in here before the you know writing anything so you can simply leave the value empty so that the value would be provided by the user so when the user will write anything here that value would actually go uh, that would value which actually uh, would go in this variable and then we can use this variable to, to, to actually uh, access the input that the user might have provided now this is used for text input we can also write password so if you get an input where the type is password the user might specify something but that will not be shown it will be shown in the form of dots and the name again that is the variable name to which this data will be passed and you can also have a type hidden so that actually if you have a hidden 
type then you can specify the variable name but you must specify the value as well the reason is that in the case of hidden the user will not be providing any value so the value you will have to provide on your own otherwise you know uh, you will have uh, the hidden type and the variable as well but it will never get any value because the user will not be able to see that particular input and uh, you know the, the, what you see here on the left half of this test box so this is actually a label so this you have to write down before getting the input you can you know simply uh, type the label using any html tag and then you can you know use the input to get the input from the user so i'll give you example uh, by you know running a just a test page uh, just to see how it works so for example as you could see here that uh, we have a, uh, i have created a test page i have created a test form here so first this is the heading that i have this is the main tag and within that i have a you know heading this is a test page i have created a form so within the form you have to specify action action means that the data of this one this particular form will be submitted to which particular page so i have written display discount.php that means uh, the data of this one would actually go where the data of this particular uh, page would actually go to this particular page now if you don't have uh, for me for example i haven't uh, you know created that page so for example it might go to this particular page here and then method that i have used uh, post and uh, you can have two different kind of methods you can either have the post method or get method we studied that previously we'll see that again in a bit then i have created another uh, kind of uh, uh, another kind of uh, uh, tag here that is div tag so i can close that div tag here because it has started but it has not ended so i can close that tag here so this tag div tag started here ended here within that i have two inputs here now i have used the label to to actually specify the label before getting the input first one is tax and this is the variable that will actually get that particular uh, you know input that the user may specify the second one the label is password type is password so type is important that means it will not be shown to you what exactly you are uh, you know typing and the name is password so that uh, means uh, this is the variable which will actually get the value so this actually could be any variable name but this one type has to be exactly same as password if you want it to be password so i can simply run this and uh, check uh, you know how it works so uh this is just a you know dummy test page so if i run this okay this is what i get so test page here it asks me for username so i can enter any username for example i can write my name here and any password here so you see that password is not shown and the username is shown now i did not create any button here so for submission so i can do that as well so if i want to create any button here so i can you know simply do this i can create a button by creating another division here so this is uh, for button and uh, okay so i do not want any label for the button this is uh, the type is submit because if i click it it should be submitted so there is no other input here and uh, what should be displayed there it should be displayed as run so the, the the button the name would be run here so i can do that so as i said i have created a page testing.php so this page you know does not do anything with the data that is submitted uh but just uh, to show you that uh, any for any data that you have inside the form once you send it so it will be submitted to you know this particular page uh, that you may have inside your uh, you know uh, inside your current project so for example i have a testing.php page here inside my project so uh if it was in some other directory so then you may you know specify the actual the full directory as well so now this will be submitted to this one so if i click again so you see that okay now we have run button here so i can write on any any username here i can write anything here and i can click on run so it will go to this page so it is telling that this page is under construction because i did not print anything in that particular you know testing.php page so uh, so that is why it gives me actually this so this way you can have the text for getting the text input from the user name is the variable name with through which the value will be passed and the password type would be that uh, it will not be shown to the user what you are power you know typing in and uh, uh, yeah so if you want to use a 
hidden that will not be shown to the user so you will have to provide the value for that i did not use it but you can you know use it you might have seen that uh, you know already uh, previously when we were creating forms for uh, some other applications in previous chapters okay so if you can either use the get method or the post method for submitting the data i have shown both uh, in in the previous uh, uh, example that i gave i was using the post method so you can use post and get method both if you use the get method then the get array actually gets all the data if you use the post method the post array gets all the data now what is the difference between get and post if you are using the get then uh, uh, suppose this is the this is your page so after submitting the data what will happen any data jar that you have submitted will be passed in the url so you could see that uh, username is passed in the url password is also passed and action is also passed in the url so for example the action was login here so the action was login so all of this data is actually passed here now you may not actually want to do that the reason is the password is actually shown in the url you may not want the password to be displayed so suppose if you use the get method so it will be displayed like this and how can you actually get this data once this data is submitted to the page which you had specified uh, you know in the action for example i had specified this page so this would data would be submitted to that page in that file you can you know use the uh, get array to get that data and process it so for example if you use the get method so i can use input underscore get i can use the filter input uh, function and uh, the name of the variable that was used so i had the username variable the password variable and the action variable so i can get you know username password and action and save those into any variables and then i can do anything with those you know variables if i want to if you use a post method the advantage is only the name of the file would be there none of the data that you will pass will actually be shown in the actual url and uh, and uh, uh, when it will be submitted to the page uh, uh, then in that particular you know page file you can use what if it is post method so the only difference is instead of using input underscore get you can use input underscore post rest will be same so if you don't want the data to be passed in url use the post method otherwise use the get method okay so uh, that was if you are submitting some kind of text whether it is password or if it is a uh, if it is hidden or if it is any other you know kind of text now you may want to take the data from the user in the form of what in the form of radio buttons now this you actually have when you have you know multiple options and you want uh, one of the options uh, to be given from the user so for example you may you know create or you male or female and then you may have you know male or female uh, in the uh, form of a radio button and the user might have to click so how can you click uh, how can you create a radio button so again you need the input because you want input from the user type would be radio in this case so it is not text or password or hidden now it is radio and this is the variable name card type because you might be asking the user what is your card type and here it is the value this is the value that will be passed if the user clicks on any one of the links so for example the first one that is displayed here that is visa so when the person you know checks this one or selects this one you want to pass the value visa so you already have chosen so in this case the user will just be clicking and the value you will already have chosen which will be passed to the form so here the value is visa second one the value is mastercard the third one the value is discover so this value is actually passed to the form and that which you have outside the input that is actually the the label that you will be you know seeing here now you could see that in this case the name are exactly the same so previously you could see that you know that you had different name username password because you had different kind of inputs so different variables now here this basically will give you only one input only one of these will be selected so that means you have to use the same variable name here so it could either be this value this value this value it cannot be more than one value whatever value is whether it is visa mastercard or discover that will be passed to this particular variable so you have to use the same variable name when you are using the radio buttons so i can simply uh, you know uh, one more thing actually i forgot here so inside the input you can also specify you know one optional variable option statement here checked 
so that is actually that that means that uh, one of that value would actually be automatically be selected so you may want to do that uh, in in a case that the user actually might forget to answer it and it might give you a null value for this particular variable card type so you do not want that so in that case what can you do so you can use the check so that one of the option is al al already automatically checked so let's suppose if i run it so now if i you know add this thing here so suppose i add this thing here so this page runs here so you see that it gives me these options visa has been selected because i had you know checked it so i can either select this one this one and i can simply run it so it will again go to that particular page here so uh, if i remove the check then what will happen so for example if i remove check from here so then in that case none of the option will be selected you see none of the option is selected and i have to select so it is actually good to to, to select one of those by using check uh, so that uh, you know user doesn't miss uh, this particular input so for example if i check the master card so if i click here now so you would see that the master card is automatically selected so you can choose which option would automatically be selected so this is how you can create radio button so once you create radio button the, the data is sent so that data again you can you know process using the php coding to uh, the page where it is submitted so since the data is submitted to card type so i can use the post if you have used the post uh, uh, array and i can use the variable name here the variable name you have used uh, i had used the card type here so the same variable name and then i can save that into any particular variable now it is good to add a default value if there is no default value then in that case you may have to write this that you will get the input and then you might have to you know check this if card type is null then you will have to add a value that it is unknown which card it is so as i said it is good to you know choose a default value by using the checked option okay then we have the check boxes option so for check boxes option you can use input type check box in this case so all of these are actually check boxes similar to what we had previously all of these were radio now all of these are check boxes option you can specify the name now in this case uh, since uh, the user might select multiple values so that the user will not be submitting only one value so previously we were you know getting only one value so you have to use the same variable name in the name now here you know uh, you can have one input or you can have multiple inputs may be selected so you will have to use a different name for each one of the check boxes that you have so for example this is it you basically uh, the check box option that when somebody is requesting uh, online for a pizza delivery so the person might be you know checking what kind of toppings the person might want so we for example the first one the variable name is pep that is pepperoni or mushroom or olive so these are the variable name you have used and then uh, these are the uh, labels that will be printed after the input and again you can use the checked options if it is you know by default and anything you want to be checked so uh, let us try to run it to see how it works so now you see that you have these options in this case you can actually choose multiple options you can remove anything you can add anything but in the previous case in the case of radio if there was one default option you could choose other but one of the option will always be selected you could not deselect all so in this case you can actually deselect all and similarly if i remove this checked uh, where was the checked if i remove this check so the default check will not be there so now you see none of these is actually selected okay uh, in this case uh, when you get the values so since the values will be in multiple variables so you will have to check all the variables some variables may have values some variables may not have any value so for example if you if the values are passed using post array so you can directly use dollar underscore post and the variable name and then check is set so you can check whether it, it has any value so if it is not set then that means uh, you know it will actually be false if it is set then you will get true so depending on which one is true you may you know find out okay this value was actually uh, selected by the user this value was not selected by the user now 
the problem with this kind of technique is if you have a lot of options suppose you have tens of hundreds of options then you might have to check one by one and that would be really difficult to do so you don't really want to do this way so what you want you want a better way so um, so what you can do is instead of creating a different variable for each one of the inputs you can actually use an array so for example here you could see we can use you know array top array for all of these and I've specified you know not the index just the uh, square brackets here so that means the first value that you have that uh, you know if somebody clicks it that will go into you know the zero index the, the, the second value whichever value it uh, clicks that will go to the second index first in, in top of one top of zero top of one and if third one is clicked that will be go that will go into top of three now uh, so for example we can you know do this as well in fact it, it will show you exactly the same thing so i'm not gonna you know, compile it again because this is the only thing that has changed now if you use top for example an array how can we access it uh, that which particular uh, value has been uh, selected and which has not been selected so this is how you can actually check so first you can use the input post so since uh, you know the, the, the variable name was top it was in the array so i have used top here then you have you know some of these options here so you can simply uh, you know use uh, these as it is uh, I'll explain these in a bit and uh, after that uh, uh, what it will do is it will get the input from the user uh, from this particular array and that will be saved into topping so first you can check whether you have any toppings at all so if it is not well that means there are some values so you can check okay topping 0 topping 1 topping 2 so at 0 you will have you know, pap, at 1 you will have you know olf and at 2 you will have what you will have actually the third value which was what uh, which was olf now if you do this way so the problem with this way is although you may not have to use a lot of different variables the problem with this way is if the third value is not set if one of the value is not set so suppose uh, you know the, the, the um, you know you see that pepperoni is set olive is set so there are only two values so whichever values are set those actually go to the array so this one if this is set this will go to zero this is set this will go to one this one is not select so that means the top of two would be empty so if you try to access it it will give you error because there is no value there so then again you you actually have the same problem that you are trying to access one by one and you don't really know which value is set which value is not set and there is a chances of error as well so how can we actually do that so we'll see that what is the way to do that we can do that using what using for loop so let us try to see how can we do that now before i go for a for loop so uh, there are two uh, inputs here that uh, we needed to discuss so although these are at this moment should not be uh, any of our concern because we have not studied the details of these but just to go through so this one is actually you know, required when you are passing an array uh, to, to using the post uh, using the post you are actually passing an array so then you have to use it normally you see when you use the uh, post so you can simply use the you know the, the, the variable name but since here this is an array this variable is actually an array so you have to write here filter require array that you are actually getting an array and not a single value and this third argument that you have filter sanitize special characters so this is actually used when you have some special characters you know in the input so you might have to use this uh, to actually treat those special characters as special characters and this also gives a guard against any kind of attacks uh, you know to the website as well so we have not started the access attacks at the moment so we'll just leave at the moment so just, just this much is enough for you that this is for requiring an array and this is for converting special characters so that there is no access attacks now so how can we actually use the loop to go through the array uh, so let us try to see so again you will get the input from the user you will check whether it is not null now rather than checking the uh, value one by one you can do what you can actually use the for each loop so for each loop does what, what so in the case of for each loop you don't have to specify the starting and ending it automatically starts from the first element and goes till the last element so this will actually make sure you do not access an index which is not present in the actual uh, in the actual array so for example this is our array so for each toppings as and here you are specifying you are using you know this arrow here, uh, 
equal to and then this uh, you know uh, this bracket here this bracket here so this actually means that you are trying to get both the value and the index so key here will get the index and value will get the value at that particular index and then you can print the value and we have actually printed here so this here will get the index dot equal to so this is as a string this will be combined dot value so this will be combined again and dot then there is a new so you could see here that first time when it will go through it will print zero and whatever value was at the zero so you could see that the value at the zero was what at this was actually pep because this was the name that we have used we had used the pep you know name value here and when it will go to the second one so it will try to use one and at one what we have we have the olive because this is the one that is selected and then after that it will simply stop and if there is no topping then it will simply say that no toppings have been selected so then you know it will automatically go through all the values and it will not give you any error so this is the you know correct way to actually go through the values that are submitted by checkboxes okay uh, the next uh, kind of input that we have is actually a drop down list so that could be you know done using the select option so now you do not have the input command so you are not actually using the input anymore so here you have you know multiple options from where the user has to select so you can use the select tag here. We, we actually had done that when previously we were selecting the category uh, when you were adding new product so it was a drop down list so that could be done so uh, for having a drop down list you have to write select and since only one of the input will be you know given so you can have one variable name so for example name is card type so this is the same thing that we already did for uh, uh, you know card type but there we actually use the radio buttons rather than you know the drop down so this is the same thing so you will have the select then you will have the options and here value this is the value that will be passed and this is the one that will be shown in the drop down list and so for visa we have value visa for mastercard we have mastercard for discover we have discussion so i can actually you know just run it so instead of this i can run this so you could see that i have the option so i can select and you know mastercard i can select discover i can select any one and then i can simply run that So if you using, uh, okay, you can also use the selected option. So if you want a particular, you know, value to be selected by default, the first one is actually selected. If you want any, any other value to be selected, so for example, you could see if I run it, the first one, which is visa that is selected automatically. So I can, you know, pick the other one. But if I want, uh, you know, not the visa, if I want some other, so for example, if I want master card to be selected, so I can actually write here selected so that means this would automatically be selected so this is selected you see that master card is selected then I can choose any other if I want to through the drop down list now remember we are using selected here and when we had uh, you know radio button or uh, the, the check boxes so then you were using the checked option here so that is the difference and once it is passed so you can simply use the you know the, the filter input to get the input but you can also have a list box now the list box is where you have you know a lot of options uh, and you know you can you know click on any one so it is not a drop down list but uh, it is like a list but all the values are actually shown there now this is normally used when you can have multiple selections rather than one selection so for example if you want to have multiple selections in that case you can use since in the case of uh, you know the card tab you wouldn't want to have multiple selection so we actually this list box will not allow multiple selection now we can have uh, the select here again and option but uh, it is exactly similar to the previous one, select and the options but since uh, you know we can specify here what size so size would actually tell us that it is actually what it is a list box and it is not a it is not a drop down list so if you write size 3 that means three options will be shown here if you add five options only three would be shown rest you can move using these arrows 
So if you have you know, only three and you write size three, all of those will be shown. So for example, I can compile this here. So if I run it, so you see that all three options are shown here. So I can actually choose any option. Now if I want to choose multiple, it does not allow me. So for choosing multiple options, you can actually hold the control key and try to select multiple options, but this is not allowing me to have multiple options. Okay, so if I change this size, then what will happen? For example, if I write two here, so if I run it now, so then in that case, only two values will be displayed. If I want to go to third one, I can click on the arrow to go to the third one, or I can click on this arrow to go to the first one. So, so you can select what would be the size. So if you have a lot of options, then in that case, you can you know have a smaller kind of grid here and only show a few values in the size and rest could be shown uh, by you know uh, by moving using the arrow button now if you want to have a list box that allows multiple selections so for example you know if you are selecting the uh, suppose uh, if you are selecting the toppings in that case the user must be able to specify multiple options so then you can use what size again and multiple here that means multiple options can be selected but in this case, since multiple options can be selected, so that means you need to pass the values using an array. And then to go through the array, you can use the same you know, method we had already discussed using the for each loop. So if I do this, in this case, the multiple option is selected. So size again is three. So if I click here, so I can click, you know, two as well by holding on, you know, the control, control key. I can click all as well. I can remove anything by holding the control key so this is how it can be done so if you want to have allow multiple options you can use multiple here and then you will have to use the uh, array here so that multiple values could be passed and then to, to go through that you can use exactly the same for a kind of for loop that we already have discussed now if you want to pass or send a text then for that what you can do is you can use the text area tag so the text area tag is used for you know sending the text okay so you can give a name this is the variable name which will hold all the data that is passed through this text box rows means how many you know rows vertically you want to have column means what should be the width of this box and uh, you can have an optional message as well inside so if you don't write anything here that means it will be an empty box so for example if I create this uh, if I create this, so let us try to see what will happen. So if I run it, so you see that this is printed as it is here. Welcome to PHP and MySQL. Now that was printed because uh, you know we had this here. Now if I remove this, then now there will be no text there, so it will simply be an empty box. You see it is an empty box, it can have 50 characters horizontally and it uh, can have 4 rows because we have specified rows 4 and columns 50. Columns mean actually the characters. If I for example write down 70 here, so it would become, you know, the width would become larger. So you see the width has become larger. And similarly if I, you know, rather than 70, suppose I write 55 and rows I write, uh, suppose 6 rows. So it would become larger again. See that it becomes a larger text box now. So with the bigger width and uh, and more number of rows as well. So we can have you know three, four, five, and six rows. So I think I specified six. Yes, I specified six. So that is why you have six rows. So this way you can have in any text area as well. So when you uh, use a get method and send the text, so how it is passed? So basically you will have question mark the name of the variable. So we had used comment as variable. You could see that the variable name was comment which will hold the data. And uh, all the data is passed where the correct, uh, the, the, the words are separated by plus. So plus means there is actually a space here and you are combining all of this. So this is how the data is displayed. Now if you you know write down the data so you see that you know after a certain uh, for example if you have text box so after it reaches here it will automatically move to the new line so that is actually what that is actually a kind of a 
soft uh, return or soft new line come on so in that case means that you don't want to move it to the new line this is because of the text box so when you submit your data and data probably needs to be displayed in a, in a browser so it will treat this one not as a return so that means the data does not need to be moved you simply there was no space there so that is why the data actually moved but sometimes you may actually move the data as well so for example you may you know uh, after welcome to I can you know, simply move this on the new line so that is a called a hard return so you may have a soft return or a hard return soft return means when it goes to the new line automatically when the first line or the line of a text box will finish and hard return means that you manually want to move the data so that means when it is displayed after you know processing uh, on the browser uh, on the web page then it should be on the new line the text you moved on the new line you want it to be the new, on the new line so then in that case uh, uh, you know if you if you write on a hard return so that is actually passed like this so this is what will be passed that it is a hard return and if it is a soft return then it may be you know passed uh, some something like uh, some other kind of uh, uh, command might be passed okay uh, if you use the if you do not enter any text then it will simply pass that there is no text here uh, nothing will be passed and then you can use the uh, if you use the post method for example so then you can use the post method to actually get the comment and if you use the get method so then you can use the get here to get the comment here okay all right uh, so so this is actually the code for hard returns if there is a soft return then you know you don't really have any code for the soft return actually so it will simply treat as a simple text so that it means that you know the data does not need to be moved to the new line and uh, different uh, kind of uh, you know uh, the, the, the different kind of operating system might you know deal it differently so it might be passed as this or it might be that for hard and or some other kind of coding might also be used but that actually depends what kind of operating system you might have now sometimes in your uh, uh, text you might have some kind of special characters which may be treated as if they, 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 these are actually some kind of commands but you may actually want to pass it as just a text uh, and if you want it to be printed as it is rather than being treated as a command so for example if you write you know and or if you write less than so this is actually the start of a tag and this is the end of a tag and similar double quotes are used for uh, you know for start of a string and this is also a start of a string and then you may have you know you know you may want to have extra spaces as well uh, to, to include there so then in that case uh, for example if you write and it might be treated as a command rather than you know as if it needs to be printed as it is similarly if you write this it might be treated as a start of a html tag and it might give you you know uh, some kind of error if the proper syntax is not followed so suppose if i want to i print this as it is then what should happen then instead of writing this I should write this instead of this I should write this and then if I write this this will be printed rather than this if I directly write this then it may give me error now in that case that means we may have to remember all of this so when I want to print this rather than writing in the text this I should be writing this so uh, fortunately there is a way out so we don't actually have to remember what we can do is we can simply use a command html special chart so what does it do that if there are any special characters in the input you might have specified so those actually will be converted uh, uh, converted uh, into the actual characters the, the, rather than being treated as a, uh, you know the, the, the command they will actually be treated as command character and will be printed as it is so now uh, you can use this and you can specify your string here so this is the you know the, the, the main argument that you specify the string which contains which may contain some characters which you don't want to be treated as command but as just characters and then you may have you know the, the, the hair coding style that with a double quote single quote how do you want to treat those and you may have what kind of char set you are using these are all optional so you can use the default values and then you may have double encode this we are going to discuss in a bit what is double encode so these two code style this is you know regarding the single code double code do you want to be treated as single code or double code or not at all or uh, char set what kind of character set you might be using so these are you can use the default values for these we'll see what values we have actually the default values for these okay so 
let's suppose if you pass this welcome to you know php and mysql so here i this is actually not a tag here so i want it to be displayed as it is so if i want it to be displayed as it is so for example i want it to be displayed as, like this in the browser so i will have to use the special char commands otherwise it will treat this as a tag so i can do what i can first you know when the user passes it so i can first read it from the post save this into a variable command after that i can apply html special chars on this variable and then after that i can simply echo and there will be no problem even if there are special characters those will be you know handled by this particular method here and we will have no problem at all so this is how you normally would be using it now as i said sometimes we might have to use the the, the, the other parameters as well so for example this is a parameter for dealing with the double quote single quote we'll simply ignore that this is the default value what is the character set that you are going to use so this is the one we normally use default now here the last one could be true or false now this is uh, you might want to uh, you know use it as false uh, in certain cases uh, when you actually you know sometimes you may have a problem that you actually have a character set and which might be converted into this if you want it to display it properly so for example if you have this and which you want to be play, uh, printed as it is then if you use the html special chars what it would do it will convert this into this only then it will actually be displayed because this is actually a command but if it is converted into this then that means we want to print and and you don't want it to be treated as command similarly if you have this so it will actually convert that into what into this so then the last then the, this will be printed as it is otherwise if you write this it is considered a tag so html special char actually converts this one into what into uh, the last term so what you can do is uh, so the problem could be so suppose you have this command here so in that case first you have the and so it will first convert the and into for example this but you wanted it to treat all of this as a single command and only then this will be converted into for example less than but if you have this then in that case it might convert this one into and am and then you know the lt will be printed you know as it is because it will not know what to do with this so for example you might have a double encoded less than character entity so if you have this for example and less than this so what it would do it will simply convert the and first it knows okay this is if you are using html special char with two here that means this must be converted into the corresponding uh, you know the, the, the value which is and am so it is converted into this and last then that is as it is and then this then as it is so it actually is converted to this so this might be converted into and but this one then you know the and of this one would actually uh, would not be there so you will not be able to convert the last and then so if you want the all of this to be treated as one command so you can actually write false here so that means you can actually you know you you, you uh, want it yeah so, so so you don't want the double encoding so if you write true here that means you want the double encoding if you don't want the double encoding you can simply write the false here so that it will prevent the double encoding okay so if you uh, another special function that you have which is used for finding out the uh, the hard returns or hard new lines that you might have you know entered there so if there are any new lines that you might have entered so uh, this particular command would actually convert those into you know, br which moves the text into the new line so uh, you can specify the string here and optional parameter that whether it is htm x html or not now by default this particular method that you have it treats as if the code is x html and not html but there is a small difference between the two so for us who are using html so you might write want to write false here otherwise it will treat it has x html and it will uh, convert all the hard returns into a code which will be interpreted by x html and not html so for example we have a you know text area suppose the user enters here welcome to and php and mysql these are you know these go to the next line so uh, we can first get the import then we can apply an l to br so uh, so that this particular data in this variable is uh, is converted such that all the new lines are you know properly converted now if you don't use false here that means it will use it as xhtml code 
and it will use uh, you know uh, okay so it, it might use uh, these kind of tags these are the tags which we use for XHTML for HTML we simply use this tag so it might use this tag and if you pass it through HTML it might give you error so we want to use HTML uh, you know code for moving to the new line and not XHTML so you can simply write false here so wherever you have a new line it will simply place the, these so that the text moves to the new line rather than placing these so after that if you simply you know echo it so you will see that this will be printed okay last uh, that we have last thing that we have here is uh, okay so we have a uh, echo statement so echo statements are actually used to print something you know on the browser we have been using echo statement so you can simply print the variable directly you can also print the variable by putting it into parentheses so parentheses here are not important if you write it is okay if you don't write that is fine you can also have multiple variables as well to be a code you know in one echo statement where these can be separated by commas where uh, the, the, the variables might have different kind of data types as well so we have few examples here for example we can write welcome to php and mysql so this is a simple variable directly the value is passed you can also write you know one string dot the variable so you know that this is concatenation so it will convert that into one string and that will be a code you can also write the same in uh, parenthesis that is also okay you can also have two variables with different data types and combine with what with comma as well so you can separate the variable so this is a string variable uh, string uh, you know this is a variable which has string value and this is another variable which has uh, probably some other kind of value and you are combining both of these and you know using the comma if you use comma then you cannot use parenthesis so normally if you are using one variable so you can simply use the parenthesis but if you are more variables separated by comma then parenthesis are not allowed in this case you actually have one variable only why because these two variables are actually separated by dot so that means you are actually combining them into one particular string so that is actually one variable now you can also use the print statement as well if you want to print now if you are using echo in the case of echo you can have multiple variables separated by comma but if you use print then you can have only one variable at a time so you can either print this or you can use this you could see this is also one variable because these two are converted to a string you have dot here you can also use parenthesis that is also fine but you cannot have you know this kind of syntax where you are separating the two by the comma so this is not allowed in print now one advantage of print is that you can use in an expression so for example if we have this expression this is actually an if condition if this is true this would be executed if this is false then what you have after the column that is executed you might have seen this this is called a you know ternary operator you might have seen that in other languages so if age is greater than or equal to 18 if this is true the statement which is after the question mark that is executed and if this is false the statement we have here now after the column that is executed okay so uh, we can either use the print statement or we can use the echo statement as i said if you are using the echo statement we can have multiple variables for print we cannot have uh, multiple variables separated by commas but, but we can actually have uh, we can use the print statement whenever you need to return something so in certain functions you might have to return something so print actually returns a value of 1 so you can actually use print there rather than using echo there okay, let me just give you an example of uh, the print and echo so let me try to create a php tag here suppose I create a php tag here and inside that I can have an echo or print so suppose I write echo uh, I am testing so you see that it will work I am testing I am testing is printed now if I write print here so uh, it will also print I am testing so both of these actually work but if you have multiple variables so in that case if I write for example here I am testing one line 
you see it is giving me error because in print you can have only one statement only you can have, cannot have multiple statements if I use dot then that means these two are actually connected so then it would work but if I use comma then in that case these two are different statements so I cannot have multiple variables separated by comma so it is giving me error but I can actually use the echo statement here so if I use echo you see that there is no error here so in the case of echo it will, it will print it so I am testing one line so it will work so you can separate the variables by using comma in the case of uh, uh, the echo but in the case of uh, print you can have only one of the inputs so okay this is it for today so today we have discussed uh, different kind of inputs we can have for forms we have discussed the text input the password input the hidden input we also discussed the uh, the check boxes the radio buttons and the drop down list and list boxes and um, so all of these inputs were discussed uh, and we also have discussed the, uh, the, the the text box that we can use we can also we also saw how can we convert the special character that have been entered in a text or how can we detect the new lines that may have been entered by the user or uh, uh, hard enters that the user might have entered and we also you know discussed the echo and print statement what is the difference between the, between all of these so I hope you would have understood everything so if you have any questions so just let me know during the question answer session thank you